In June 1628, the London publisher, Edward Blunt, had an anonymous volume printed, under the title, Microcosmography, or A Piece of the World Discovered. It became, for the next hundred years, a real bestseller. But note. The obscure, unknown author of these essays and characters, throughout his own life, remained anonymous. Who, on earth, may have been the anonymous author, of these extraordinary character portrayals? Partly highly autobiographical, Even the 13th edition, in 1732, still did not bear the author name on the title page, but, but was astonishingly mentioned, for the first time, in the preface, to the reader, as Dr. John Earl. This video presents some plausible arguments and reasons, why John Earl's ascribed authorship, 300 years ago, has seriously to be questioned, and to be recognized as a hoax. And why the true Shakespeare in 1627, a few years after the first folio, is the most likely candidate. The anonymous author of microcosmography could not, and cannot possibly be identified, unless accepting a contemporary Marlowe Shakespeare authorship complot. It begins with the editor of the microcosmography, Edward Blunt, who was the publisher of the first folio, a few years before. We can be sure, he must have known the anonymous author of Microcosmography and the true Shakespeare as well, in any case. Edward Blunt, in the epistle of Microcosmography, discloses, that he was asked by the anonymous author, not to reveal his name under any circumstance. To whom else, in 1627, but Marlowe, does this absolute confidentiality, within the significant context of microcosmography make sense at all? significant connections of Marlowe, to Edward Blunt, as the first editor of Hero and Leander, cannot be overlooked. As well as his documented friendship to the editor of Shakespeare sonnets, Thomas Thorpe, in 1609. be fully aware. There are other authors, before and later, that had published similar epigrammatic and narrative essays and character portrayals, as for instance. Thomas Bastard, Nicholas Breton, Joseph Hall, John Stevens and others. Who were these authors such as Thomas Bastard, Nicholas Breton and the others, also pen names, of Marlowe?
There are other, weighty reasons, to postulate, that in 1627, microcosmography can only have been written by the true Shakespeare, and not by an obscure anonymous author John Earl. Let's regard those reasons a little closer. Previous arguments, why John Earl remained anonymous and literarily unfruitful, after his character portrayals and essays, for his total lifetime, are hardly acceptable, logical, nor plausible. The rapid, successive, yearly enlargement and corrections, by additional essays in 1628, in 1629, in 1630, in 1633 support the idea of one of the most inventive poetical character writers. The clarity and poetical conciseness of these character sketches, favors a literary affinity of the true Shakespeare to these texts. The numerous hues and extension of Latin and Greek references, support the idea of the high educated true poet genius Shakespeare. The deep knowledge, about the poet genius powerful spectrum of character portrayals in his complete dramatic plays, of the first folio, printed a few years ago, is of great significance. It is compatible with a life experienced, eloquent man, but hardly with a young John Earl, without any past life of literature. Some years before, a rather unknown poet, Thomas Bastard, had already dealt poetically with the subject of the microcosmos. Epigram 4. Bearing the face of the university. And in this context, dealt. In Epigram 5. With the own work of his muse, and the infinite task and labor, of his straying pen, If we take into account these striking inner connections with other contexts of the epigrams, it suggests a connection between the anonymous author of microcosmography and the true Shakespeare. The epigrams of Davis, Haywood, Sandis, Daniel herein, all speak for a multiple pseudonymity of a concealed author, the true Shakespeare. In Epigram 3, the poet John Davis is getting convinced, that he is better than the poet Thomas Haywood. But, that the author himself, is even better than Davis. What author, in 1598, but the true Shakespeare could feel so superior to two contemporary, allegedly living poets, Davis and Haywood, in such an insolent way, if they both were not identical with him? That is, his own pseudonyms? In Epigram 16, Book 7. The author, T.B. in Christolaros, accuses the poet Samuel Daniel, having stolen his epigrams, and his small glory away. It had been, his conceit. It hits, his vein. Who else, than the author, 
TB in Xtolaros, could dare to publicly accuse the poet Samuel Daniel, having stolen his epigrams and his glory away. If it was not a veiled illusion, of the true Shakespeare on his fatal pseudonymous life situation? In Epigram 35, Book 7. The author, T.B. in Christolaros, reveals, that he lives in an other's voice. Of Sands. His name had been changed, with his death. Who else, in 1598, but the true Shakespeare, could confess, that he is now living in other's breath? meaning, with others' voices. He admits in a roundabout way, that in his alleged death, he changed his names. In Epigram 11, Book 3, the author reveals, that, if Hayward would now live again, he would write, but he himself could express, explain, his conceitedness, his vein. Who else, in 1598, but the true Shakespeare could declare Haywood deceased, but in case of his comeback, would. If he would write, explain his, self-made, deception. In 1640, an elegy, signed by John Earl, on Francis Beaumont's death, appeared at the end of the book entitled, Poems by Beaumont. Since long, John Earl is considered the author of these lines, allegedly written 30 years earlier in 1616, when he was a young, 15 years old, boy. Beaumont is said to have died a month prior. March 1616, to William Shakespeare. From Stratford. There is no way, that 15-year-old Earl could have written these verses for various reasons. Earl praises Beaumont, as having a gigantic spirit, such as five good wits could not husband. No one should dare, to reject him, as the best. Beaumont's death made him, his art, appear. He represents a kind of disease, that consumes one wit, in a few years. The strange poem seems to highlight the outstanding greatness of a young friend, whom everyone must recognize as the very best. He cannot, by any stretch of imagination me Beaumont, now deceased, timely to Shakespeare. It enables the true wit's art, to appear, but likewise a disease, consumes one wit, in few years. Beaumont as a playwright makes sense here, only, if he, in fact, was a pseudonym of the true Shakespeare.
be fully aware. There is not a single hint of clear and direct proof that this bishop wrote the poetical essays of microcosmography in the late 1620s. Many, of the character portraits of the anonymous poet, in microcosmography, bear clear autobiographical as well as autoreflexive, traits, with significant hints of interpretation. This must, inevitably, be viewed as absurd and ridiculous today, since Shakespeare was dead for more than ten years. Consider, since we do not possess, beyond the writings, a single document of the true Shakespeare's personality. The infinite wealth of self-reflections in microcosmography allows us to catch more than a glimpse of the essence of the true poetic genius Shakespeare. It is immediately noticeable, that the anonymous author, plumbing the depth of the most secret parts of the human psyche or soul conspicuously often reflects about man, widely in a complementary and, or, dialectic way, with positive and negative properties, at the same time. Reflect, and read the end of character portrait, number 23, entitled, A Mere Complimental Man. The stunning answer is. He, the author of microcosmography stands for all character types. Sketched in these essays, in a bitter ironic and sarcastic way. It's the true Shakespeare, alias Christopher Marlowe.
please reflect. Subsequently, a few short contextual excerpts of some selected character types.